fan. What's up guys and welcome back to the Hitbox European Championship. This is going to be a best of three upper brackets, so no elimination, between Aspera and, well this is my insanity, not Falaga. I don't even know what that is. But uh, I'm Mike Loris, gonna be one of your guys for today. More Rage Please is here as well, and this is all on the Pro Dota English channel by Alpha Draft Steel Series and esportgaming.com. Be sure to check them out, make a draft, buy a mouse or something, and then, well, go ahead and place a bet. But, dude, what are you looking forward to in this game? It's been a while. Oh, it's been a long while. Fired up to see this matchup. Look, should be a pretty even one. I would say slight favorite towards MY Insanity, especially considering that they picked up Niqua for this matchup, replacing Mitch uh, from yesterday. So I'd say true odds are about 55-45% over on D12. It's currently 51-49 in MYI's favor. A lot of roster shuffling going on for both sides. It seems like Milan and the Apathy are the only members, respectively, of MYI, and Aspera still remaining, and everyone else kind of jumping in to try out a, a new squad as most of Dota is reshuffling after TI. Yeah, but uh, you can recognize a lot of these names, Spartan, mm -hmm. from uh, London Conspiracy. Nikwa obviously yeah. was uh, last on Alliance. I don't think he's been on anything since then. He might have been, but uh, mm -hmm. then of course you have everyone else who they've been they've been around like Duza, Limbo, uh, Arzik was on Vega beforehand. So yeah, these yep. teams have definitely or the players rather definitely had their fair share of experience. So it's just a matter of finding a you know, a lineup that works. And they're in the upper bracket, so it had to have worked at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, even Techies pick up uh, for one of these sides yesterday, so it uh, should be interesting to see uh, what they're able to pick up throughout the draft here. Aspero, it's something to note, really favor Afterlife's Clockwork, so I would be surprised. wouldn't be surprised if they pick it up uh, pretty early, maybe second Dying. phase, and if, if it's banned out by MYI. Another thing to note, uh, you're mentioning finding chemistry there, our Zeke, Undershock after like all formerly together on album sheet at one point. Mm -hmm. So these p players are fairly familiar with each other. Dude, album sheet. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that was such a long time ago. Uh, that was a good team. I, I like that team quite a lot, yeah. actually. So yeah, we'll see if they could, uh, you know, bring a little bit of that magic back. Uh, well, we'll see what they actually want to do with their draft. Looks like the bands are going to be pretty vanilla as far as bands are concerned. And Gyrocopter Lena as the opening for Aspera. Most likely these two are going to be going into the safe lane, going into the mid lane. But uh, for my insanity, they grab a tusk first. Uh, maybe looking for some techie shenanigans, perhaps later on. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past them uh, for sure. Generally, we see Nico Baby pick up somewhat of a self-sufficient laner for his one position. Uh, PL, uh, Anti-Mage, Slark, things like that. Uh, he's pretty versatile, so they can look to roam aggressively here, and it does seem like that is somewhat the theme, at least with the early Tusk picked up, of course, as you mentioned. Everything pretty damn true to the meta uh, thus far. Lena Gyro opening is a strong one for Aspera as well. They get the burst damage for sure. Like, Lena doesn't really need that much help in lane, though if Aspera can get their hands on a Shaker, then I'm pretty sure they'll be happy to grab it. Uh, Gyrocopter, mm -hmm. also one of the most self-sufficient core heroes like among the list of what you were just uh, referring to before. So Aspera do have the possibility now of picking up very heavy roamers and then just, like Clockwork, rotate around, or like not Clockwork the hero, but uh, just rotate around constantly and then use the overall lane yeah. strength of Gyrocopter and Lina to have those lanes just stand while the rest of the supports win all around the map. But it is going to be a My Sanity Clockwork pick for them, so mm -hmm. they said uh, Afterlife does love that hero, so it is essentially another ban. But also a really good pick for my insanity here. Yeah, it does combo well uh, with the Tusk. They'll have a lot of control there. Uh, and definitely uh, Gyrocopter, not the easiest target to be jumping in onto, but uh, they can definitely blow up the Lina with that combo plus one support. Uh, maybe look for a Dazzle here as they are going to be a little bit heavy towards the melee side early on. Uh, and they can use that Shadow Wave to good effect. But yeah, as you mentioned, looks like uh, MY Insanity doing their homework here. Aspera doing the same. Uh, Nico Baby's Phantom Lancer is going to be banned out in the second phase. That's one of his more comfortable heroes. And when we saw them in the uh, previous match, I guess the first round, uh, he just went off one game with a Slark. It was just a systematic mm -hmm. game. Got the Shadow Blade, suddenly all the Tier 1s are down, suddenly all the Tier 2s are down, and then suddenly Raxes are gone. And that's just sometimes how it goes. So uh, we'll see if they actually want to go for that uh, very systematic tempo-based gameplay. With the Clockwork and Tusk, the door is certainly very open, and it's in fact looking pretty attractive for them. They'll just need Nico Baby to get his hands on a hero that he's comfortable with and is actually able to participate in those types of fights. Slark is one of them, and well, you already mentioned a couple of those previously. So mm -hmm. uh, for Aspera, the Shaker is not going to be banned out right now. Uh, 
as you said, the my sandy side are a little bit melee heavy already, so maybe Asparo could even sit on that shaker pick a little bit, just uh, feeling confident that my and sandy aren't going to yeah. pick it up. Radiant yeah, it's also a hero that Milan loves to play for MY, so it would be another uh, pick deny or pick ban uh, if Asparo were able to pick it up. I think another thing that they like to run is the Wyvern, and with the melee heavy lineup thus far from MY and Tenity, the Wyvern could be fairly effective here. Uh, there is a lot of physical damage as well. Of course, the Tusk going to rely on his Walrus Punch, so... Uh, I, I could see the Wyvern coming out. Don't see it coming out anytime soon. Maybe something like a fourth or fifth pick. Uh, but we'll see what direction Aspera goes in here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what mid laner they pick up. They do pick up the Dazzle, though. Uh, so actually going to be against that melee heavy lineup as opposed to for MYI. Yeah, so Aspera getting ranged and uh, Mind Sandy grabbing melee. And I'll just favor the range heroes most of the time there. Uh, if. Yeah, this is also going to make it a little bit less attractive for my insanity to grab someone like a Skywrath Mage, who would actually be, would have been really good uh, with the clockwork, mm -hmm. with the tusk set up as well. But uh, when you trap someone in the cogs, you usually want to kill off that hero, and remaining. you can't when there's a Dazzle on the other end. Dazzle saving the likes of Gyrocopter and Lina. You know, there are heroes that you could save with Shallow Grave, and then you could try to get them out of there. But when you're talking about yeah. Gyrocopter, Lina. They'll get their spells out, and those spells hurt like hell, and they only need a couple of seconds to cast mm -hmm. them. Yeah, Rocket Barrage and LSA are both good ways to deal with the cogs, and maybe this is a situation where you see that uncharacteristic Shallow Grave max just for the extra range. Uh, they don't have too much melee thus far, so the Shadow Wave may not be as effective as it usually is, and uh, Dazzle can be definitely really good for extending fights and allowing them to get their burst damage off. Going to have to see uh, at least one more core come out for MY Insanity here. Uh, they are going to pick up the Naga for now. Could still definitely be a support. I know this is something they've run from time to time, and uh, Tusk and Naga definitely very uh, good at trading early on. High base armor for both of those heroes. And you could make the armor swing happen with the Riptide as well. And if you have the upside of Naga Siren, we do see her sometimes paired up uh, in dual lanes just because she has an ensnare, and it's a point-click disable. Not a stun necessarily, but hey, sometimes mm -hmm. that's all you need. This is, however, the third Ten melee hero remaining. from my insanity. They they can't get any more, right? Like, they can maybe try to get away with, like, Naga Siren mid lane. Clockwork in the off lane is usually going to be really, you know, he's well positioned there, but... Uh, this is going into a Gyrocopter Alina, and Dazzle, you said, the Shadow Wave is better when you yourself have a lot of melee heroes, but mm -hmm. if all the enemies are melee, they're also all going to get hit by the Shadow Wave, and they're all going to tend to group up for a weave, so my Sandy desperately needs some sort of ranged control. They need to just not get crushed by this Gyrocopter Alina, who are some of the best heroes at punishing melees. Yeah, and I know for mid laner, they've run SF and they've run Lena, and both of those heroes are out of the pool for them, so they are a little bit limited towards uh, ranged cores here, so maybe we do see this Naga uh, put into the one position, of course. Uh, I don't know how effective the Naga will be up against all the burst available to a spare. You generally uh, never see a BKB build on that Siren, so uh, a heart is going to have to come out early for her to be effective. So at this point, I expect it to be... Uh, in the support role, and you already expressed the Five dangers of uh, perhaps that configuration for MYI. Axe Dyer pickup comes out uh, like for it. Aspera, and yeah, it's it's a it's a pick deny as well. I mean, they don't want the Axe to be available up against their Grave, and they definitely do need that Frontliner to combo up with the Shadow Wave, as, as you mentioned. But also, if you're going to be making illusions with the Naga Siren, then Axe loves to get himself into the middle of that. If you're going to go super melee heavy, Axe is actually the best hero. Um, Maybe you can make the argument for Jakiro, possibly, but uh, I would say I would rather have an axe on my team against five melee heroes. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a really great pick for Aspera. They needed a solo lane hero, they needed an off lane. They do have probably still uh, enough power, maybe uh, keep their options open for an offensive tri lane, but a Pugna for the My Insanity side. Uh, I mean, it's ranged. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, that, but I don't really know where this fits into their draft, or it's not even really countering anything significant from Aspera. I feel like it makes their lanes relatively weak. Uh, if he goes towards the mid lane, I worry heavily for him to get pressured early on and just get stomped in the lane. Even even just a couple waves of, of support presence from Aspera there, and Pugna gets behind, and he's kind of in a lot of trouble. He doesn't want to put seconds. pressure on that tower early, push the wave out, grab the runes if he's able to do so, but he's just kind of a slow hero and really does need support, so look for him to be in the safe lane along with the Naga and the Tusk doing a lot of damage. Clockwork off by himself and the mid laner to come out at the end for MYI, but I really don't feel like yet Pugna is the solution. Uh, not too many high mana cost 
uh, abilities for a spare. I mean, they do want spam ability for sure, but they already have three ranged heroes and Lena with 600 range to try and bring down that nether ward. I feel like for my insanity, they have to kind of just go super aggressive tower push style mm -hmm. at this point. Like, they already have the Pugna, and that's always going to give you a little bit of pushing, but they really need a little bit more. Like, Nagus Iron isn't really a pusher. Tusk can fight early on, as can Clockwork, but as far as killing yeah. off heroes, that's pretty easy. Killing off towers, that's really difficult for those two. So, uh, maybe it is time for someone like a Jagiro to show his face just so that they could get a little bit more aggression onto those towers. Uh, Dragon Knight, or anyone who does damage to these towers in any way, shape, or form. Aspera are going to grab a Visage, and again, it's another range here, trying to lock down these lanes as much as possible. And, uh, well, I think this is a per perfectly reasonable pick here for Aspera. They need another support. I was going to say that, or Lion, maybe, fearing uh, yeah. one position, Naga Siren, but uh, this is definitely uh, a little bit more of an early game heavy hitter than a Lion. Yeah, he, he's a pretty damn good laner. It's also a comfort pick for our Zeke. Arzik, formerly of the core role, he's been playing support uh, for Aspera, and I know Visage is one of the heroes that uh, he's pr pretty proficient on. So he can farm up as well. The Dazzle doesn't need too much aside from levels, uh, and he should be able to secure their lanes. The final pick from MYI is going to be uh, one of Nico Baby's favorites as well in the Clinks, but they are fairly squishy uh, in that one position. Yeah, they do have now a lot of extra pushing power, though, and... Uh, mm -hmm. Klinks is a little bit slower to get off than the heroes that I mentioned before, but still he can get the job done. And he is, again, one of those uh, tempo-based heroes that I was talking about earlier where they can, if they get slightly ahead, have Nico Baby get a medallion, get a desolator, and then just run around, pick off all the Aspera heroes one at a time. There's, at that point, there's not much that they could actually do about that. So yeah, we'll see if uh, how Mindsane are actually going to execute this draft. Across the board, though, I really got to favor Aspera. I feel like their draft is just a lot, lot safer. Yeah, it's definitely more well-rounded, and the, and the lanes seem pretty damn stable. Uh, as you mentioned, Clinks can ball pretty much out of control here, but with the Grave there, I don't know how effective he can be. He's going to have to catch people really out of position, and Axe, Gyro, Lina, not the easiest to kill, especially if she gets a Yule Scepter up. Uh, so I, I do fear for the Clinks, and I feel like, as you mentioned, really the only strategy for them is to ball up his 5 and start taking some towers. And we'll see if they can do that. Aspera... They're going to be putting Afterlife on the Axe. He's going to be maybe joined by Limbo. This is a lane that you could run, and it's definitely full of shenanigans, creep cutting and whatnot. Undershock is going to be playing the lead, and it looks like he's going mid. Our Zeke, he said, on his Visage. Very comfortable assignment there. And the Apathy is going to be playing the Gyrocopter, and he can be left solo for the most part. They're going to get into a fight for the top bounty rune. Thug does not want to be here as a Pugna. He's getting it with Poison Touch. That's not really going to do that much, but Milan is perhaps in a little bit more trouble. No, I actually really do like this from Aspera. They're going to poke at my insanity as much as they can, but really all they wanted was to get the bounty rune. Mm -hmm. they, they do force the skill out from Dazzle on the Poison Touch, but he should be fine if they run this duel off lane. Over on the side of MYI, we're going to see towards that safe lane, Nico Baby picking up his clinks. He's going to be accompanied by Milan on that support Naga Siren. Towards the mid lane, we will have Thug picking up the Pugna, and over in that off lane duel lane, Spartan, and we're going to have Nikwa on the Tusk and Clockwork, respectively. The goal of this lane is to pressure the Gyrocopter as much as possible. Over towards mid, actually, Undershock and Thug trading hits. Uh, it is worth noting that Thug has already used a salve, and Undershock looks like he's going to get a salve forced out as well. So this mid lane is uh, well one where they're both ranged, so trading hits is definitely likely to happen. Up towards top, though, they're going to catch our Zeke. Snowball has already been used, so uh, it's actually been used towards the Apathy instead whole bunch of hits being traded around the map, and that's really how my and Sandy want to play this game. The more aggressively they could pressure Aspera's stronger lanes, the better off they will be. The only question is whether or not they'll get away with it safely, because Thug has to ferry himself another salve. Yeah, Undershock just taking advantage of a, a little bit more regen there with the early salve usage, and uh, yeah, as you mentioned, they, they just drafted kind of tanky heroes, so... They are going to go on to RZ with another them. snowball. Cogs are up, and they're going to start beating him down. This Visage is not the easiest kill. Nico taking tower shots, but they will get the kill before losing the clockwork. It's Visage to give first blood, and even though Gyrocopter gets a kill, for my insanity, that's really the type of style they want to be executing on this lane, mm -hmm. except uh, not in tower range. Yeah, the TP's going to come back in. Spartan's going to have to back out. The flat cannon harass will be there from the Apathy, but no more mana for him to continue to give chase. Uh, they do find a kill, but they haven't stopped the Gyro from farming yet uh, thus far. Uh, he's picked up only 3 CS, but has been around the lane for pretty much everything. Sitting on level 3 now, so it's going to be a little bit hard to dive with that uh, level 2 rocket barrage. 
Yeah, and an under farm gyrocopter is not really what you want, but as long as you're getting experience, you should be kind of fine. Up towards top lane, Limbo, he's going to get himself in a bad position right now. Riptide is going to drop the armor, so Searing Arrows hurt even more. Body blocking coming in from Milan. Where did the axe go for that? I honestly have no idea. I think he just like wrapped around, checked the rune spot, and then came yeah, back he got up. The bounty rune. Did he get the rune? Well, he got the yeah. bounty rune, but it costed him his dazzle. So uh, yeah, mine Sandy getting a free one there. Yeah, definitely not worth it, especially considering how low Nico Baby was uh, at the time. But you see the synergy between the Riptide and the Searing Arrows there, uh, doing a lot of work. And uh, having to skill that Poison Touch early on towards the Rune um, maybe uh, secures Limbo's death there, but not sure that Grave would have saved him regardless. Yeah, just a little bit too much sticking power there. My Sandy have grabbed the Invisory on the bottom lane. Spartan's going to surprise the Apathy with it. Suddenly, here comes a two-man Snowball. Rocket Barrage is up, but it's split between two heroes. They're going to focus onto this Tusk. He's still holding onto the Ice Shards, but the Soul Sump is going to take him down. They get the Gyrocopter kill in the end, but Gyrocopter gets the experience credit for it. Nico is going to put a little bit of damage to RZ, but it looks like that should just about be it. I'm not sure if this is actually what Mind Sandy wanted to be doing, trading evenly kill for kill on this bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, they're finding some experience. They, they do bring on the gyro this time, so maybe a little bit more important target, but he finds a kill before dying. So, yeah, I, I feel like they really need to find favorable trades here or perhaps just get the experience for the clockwork and roam the tusk. I mean, there's no real kill potential on this clockwork if he saves a set of cogs. So I don't know that giving over kills, uh, as you mentioned, is really uh, the right route for MYI, but they are going to return uh, Spartan back to this bot lane. And as tanky as these heroes are, Rocket Barrage with Soul Assumption is just such a ridiculous combination. Mm -hmm. Like, Soul Assumption, you gotta remember, it uh, usually is gonna be filled up by bursting down one hero, because usually that's just better and how you wanna be playing the game. But as long as you get the Rocket Barrage out, the Soul Assumption bar will fill really, really quickly. So you have a really high damage skill in the Rocket Barrage, one of the highest damaging skills, uh, you know, when it's a small scale engagement in the game. And then Soul Assumption, one of the biggest nukes in the game as well. It's really hard to stand up to that, as long as the Visage is close to the Gyrocopter. And it looks like for the most part that should be the case. Up towards top, Nico may be taking a couple hits, and now perhaps we're going to see the start of this uh, shenanigans play from Aspera. They're going to catch Milan with the Battle Hunger instantly. She's going to split it out with the Mirror Images. She has an Ensnare, and Afterlife is now pegged to the ground. Ice Shard's going to cut off his escape. He's completely dead here. He'll fight to the death, but his death is incoming. Gets another spin. Maybe if he got really lucky there, could have gotten the Naga Siren, but uh, there's no way you get out of that situation. Yeah, a little bit too ballsy there, especially without the Berserker's Call being skilled up uh, from the Axe. But either way, he'll be punished for it. Uh, they do opt to rotate around the Tusk. Not exactly needed for that kill, but I feel like this is the right decision from MYI. And hopefully Spartan can get a little bit more done uh, via his rotations. Do you feel like this Battle Hunger build is actually correct? Like, I guess Axe is... Obviously, you're going to be getting counter helix in this game, but mm -hmm. both Berserker's Call and Battle Hunger seem really bad in this game. Like, Clinks can... CS yeah. so easily, you're yeah. not going to call uh, him either, so it just seems like Axe's levels are kind of being wasted just because the hero in this sit sort of situation up on top lane is not that good. Oh, down towards bottom lane, another fight, but this time it's one where the Tusk is going to drop first. Nico's going to try to die for the kill, but Rockets are going to fire and Cogs go up, not in time. It's two kills now for Aspera. Now this bottom lane for my insanity has completely lost. Yeah, they're pretty much getting demolished at this point. Uh, as you mentioned, I wouldn't have mind that value point in Battle Hunger, but against Clinks, leveling up twice is, is very suspect, and now it forces him to go into it at level 5 instead of having the third point uh, over in Counter Helix. So, once again, the bottom lane, a little bit of a disaster. They're going to rotate down Milan and TP back in the Clockwork. The Tusk rotating in as well, so perhaps uh, feeling that the TP down from Limbo is now going to force him to rotate back up to the north. Milan may run into the Dazzle here by the river. Limbo is not alone, though. He's going to look to trade hits. He actually throws out the net, and the hook will come through from Nikwa. He's going to pick up the Bounty Rune as well. He'll cog in two heroes. The Shards come in from the north. The Grave is there, and Milan will be able to make it out to the north, but it's only going to delay the inevitable. Arzi goes down. Limbo next to fall, and a two for nil. Nice hook by Nikwa there. Going to find him the kills as soon as he picks up that level six. Okay, this bottom lane is still in contention, clearly, from my insanity. Just finding a good angle there with the with the Naga Siren. Oh, finally Undershock finds LSA. I've been watching him miss LSA after LSA, but uh, yeah, one lands, nice. and then suddenly Laguna Blade, and you're Pugna. You're just going to die. So a lot of burst damage, of course, coming out from Undershock. But uh, this bottom lane is has gotten the Clockwork a lot of experience. Like, this is a dual lane Clockwork, right? Mm -hmm. With a Tusk, and Tusk is level 4, Clockwork is level 6, 7 minutes in. That is a ton of experience to be gained from the dire off lane, so maybe that's good enough for them to just keep this pressure up. 
Yeah, top lane, they are gonna dust up Nico, and they find him with a call here. Will they have enough damage? They need one more spin. The Shadow Wave is there, the dunk will finish him off. Clinks, not with the Dark Pact active, not tanky enough. And the opposite side, the offlaner is doing well as well. Level six gonna be picked up just before that kill for Afterlife. Gotta love how calling, using Calling Blade on the Clinks still results in a huge spray of blood, because somehow <laughs> that makes sense, I don't know. Uh, He's got a heart, doesn't he, floating around there somewhere? Does he? I don't know, it just looks like fire to me. <laughs> I've never really tried to cut fire with an axe before, but uh, maybe hopefully I'll get a chance to get around to it. But uh, going back to skill builds, Milan's Naga Siren has two points in Mirror Image. Mm. This is a this is like a core Naga Siren build that's not on a core Naga Siren. Yeah, this is something we've seen like Seneco do from time to time. Big Daddy does it once in a while, but you know, with a Tusk early on, a Pugna as well, uh, the Clinks, the Clockwork, you really want to get kind of active early. They are going to find the net onto Limbo, the Shards, the Riptide. He's going to grave up and try and TP out, and the Snowball will be there to cancel that. And the Dazzle going to fall again for the third time in this one. But yeah, the Mirror Image is a little bit... I, I feel like it may be a little costly for them throughout this mid uh, early game. Yeah, Riptide is just so good, and we, we can already in see, in, see in Snare is overperforming. Usually in Snare is just a mediocre disable, but in this game, when you have so much follow-up after that first disable, then, well, it's going to be working over time. He's now going to go back into Riptide, so uh, maybe that was just a miss skill or something like that, but with the support here like Nagas Iron, every single level is so precious because you're just not going to get that many of them. We have a smoke down towards bottom lane. They see the Apathy. Here comes a snowball out of the smoke. Apathy not with a chance to get the call down out beforehand. He does finally get it out, but he will drop. His soul assumption onto Spartan, not quite going to do enough. He'll chase down with the right clicks, and that should get the kill. They also slow down Nikwa, and here comes Undershock. He'll try to hook shot out, but there's no one there. He'll drop to the Lina. That was actually just a completely zero chance of hitting anyone, but it's a two kill for the Aspera side. They lose the Gyrocopter again, yet it's Lina to collect a little bit more. Uh, it's kind of a nice for Aspera, I think. Again, yeah. Gyrocopter doesn't really need that much in the way of gold to be truly effective. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a nice pickup for MY, but I feel like overall it still slightly favors Aspera. Our uh, Zeke's Visage is not someone you want to give a lot of experience to early on, and he can get really active with those familiars, and he does now pick them up around the nine-minute mark. So considering uh, that he's been alongside other heroes in lane, uh, it's a pretty good timing for him. And uh, Thug having to rotate out of mid as well gave Undershock the space to find the haste there and to find a lot of CS. So his rotation in really wasn't punished much. He's sitting atop the board with 56. Are Zeke's familiars, I mean, first of all, we already mentioned how comfortable this player is with this hero, but also familiars are just ridiculous up against my insanity. They could block hookshot, mm -hmm. which if you could do that once, you're already feeling pretty good, but also they're a really good response to a tusk snowball. You just have the familiars get overhead, and after you finish the snowball, typically you're a little bit clumped up, so familiars dropping yeah. twice will most likely save that hero, and at least buy enough time for someone like Dazzle to get in there with the Shallow Grave, which, by the way, he is prioritizing over his other skills, so the Visage's Familiars in this game looks like they're just going to be all-stars. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, Snowball, Shards, Cogs, all, all soft-countered for sure by the drop on the Familiars. Deep Ward going to be planted uh, up on the cliff by Spartan, give them a little bit of information. Doesn't look like he was scouted coming in as well, so he can start to do some rotating around. Uh, mid lane, though, is definitely more than secure here for a spare side they're perhaps going to look to push in with four heroes i'm going to leave our zeke some space bot lane hookshot is available for Nikwa, and we'll see if he looks to find this with the familiars though and the point in gravekeeper's cloak our zeke not an easy kill he's pump faking it a couple of times he's def he definitely <laughs> wants in uh, if he sees familiars anywhere else, he'll go for it, or he's just going to go for it anyway. Traps the single hero in the cogs, however, Battery Assault now going to be split between a couple of creeps. Arzik still might go down here, although here comes the Dazzle, so no more kill available for Nikwa. They'll push back the Clockwork, but here comes Thug and Familiars, so it looks like just with general reinforcements, everyone should be able to back off. Uh, actually, okay, never, never mind. Up towards the top? No, Tusk is actually going to snipe the visit with the shards. I just completely missed that. My bad, guys. Uh, Tusk, yeah, getting in there in the back line. So I guess it is, in the long run, in favor of my insanity. Yeah, I was watching the familiars bring down that nether ward as well. Waller's Punch going to go out, and they're going to try and find these familiars. They will be able to drop them down. It's a two-man stun, but there's no follow-up just yet. It will, however, give out the apathy the time to rotate back and just barely get away from the periphery of the ice shards there. Meanwhile, top lane's been pushing in a bit. Afterlife going to have to respond. Of course, Nico, baby, no slouch when it comes to tower pushing with those four points in Searing Arrows. We'll see what build he wants to go for. If he wants to, or really the uh, 
the only build choice nowadays is whether or not you go for a medallion of courage before your desolator right. desolator is going to be coming up at some point during this game i can almost promise you guys that but mm -hmm. uh medallion seems okay here but uh, judging just by his play style how he's not left this top lane for a single moment uh, just rushing the Desolator, applying more pressure to the towers, seems like it's going to be a little bit more relevant since you can't use the Medallion of Courage effect on towers, unfortunately. That would be OP as all hell. 8-9 uh, to nine right now for my insanity, and uh, well, there Pugna is wielding the maxed out blast. He has a mechanism very close to being completed as well. At that point, maybe my insanity can go a little bit more aggressively, but at the same time, Undershock will grab a Yule Scepter at about the same uh, time frame. Yeah, they're going to put pressure into this tier 1 mid. It looks like there will be a response from MYI. They're going to pop the Glyph TP in, try and clear up the wave. Uh, the Dragon Slave is going to try and keep them back. The Ice Shard is going to connect onto 3, and they are going to use the Song of the Siren here. They have the Snowball off the top of this. Familiars are lurking around. We'll see if they're able to get it off. Everyone going to Delta Split. One going to go down immediately. That's a Dazzle. He gets the Grave off, but Undershock going to be soon to fall as well. He drops the Laguna Blade. Spartan still surviving. And over on the north side, RZ going to jump down. Blink forward from Afterlife, though. Calling Blade going to bring down the Tusk. He's going to call up Thug. He's going to get Rocket Barraged as well. Second Dunk. Third Dunk incoming. It's going to find the Naga Siren. And Afterlife going ham making it a three for three uniqua now all by his lonesome has barely enough mana for a set of cogs and that'll back off the apathy and afterlife nico baby gonna try and bring down the familiars not able to do so and that fight salvaged by the call down and the freshly picked up blink from afterlife yeah the initial brunt of that uh, initiation there for my insanity was so powerful that those three heroes that were caught they were the only ones to drop, but Axe has grabbed the Blink Dagger, and Gyrocopter still with the call down, even though he doesn't have a ton of farm, is still able to do a hell of a lot of damage, so the Axe coming in there, as you said, really salvaged that fight for a spare, but that was also still a really terrifying setup there from the My Insanity side. It wasn't even uh, perfectly executed either, like the Clockwork came in a little bit too late, could have even just caught all three of those heroes in the cogs, so that split that they had, which was pretty good, next time might not actually be happening if they're clumped up once again, so... It is a kind of even trade as far as uh, you know the grand scheme of things is concerned, but the mech is going to be picked up on the Pugna, and Clinks grabs a hammer off of that one, so my Sandy, they can still play super aggressively. Aspera, yeah. though, they have the answers. They have the Force Staff even starting to be built up on the Axe. They have the Yule Scepter very close to being completed on Undershock. It's going to be you know not easy pushing times for my Sandy. Every single tower, they're going to have to work really hard for. Hmm, surely. And uh, Limbo able to get a little bit of dewarding there. It looked like MY Insanity was uh, assembling up for some aggression bot lane, but with that vision being denied, uh, they look to back off into the cover of their trees. They are going to respond for this tower push coming out from Aspera, though. Familiar is going to be up on the front lines. Afterlife tries to blink in just a little bit too far to the south to find Milan. This is not where a Pugna wants to be right now. This is not where a Naga Siren wants to be right now either, since she doesn't have Song of the Siren. She does have even more points in Mirror Image, so still not sure what's going on with this build. Seems like she wants to be played as a core, but isn't getting a lane or really farm to do so. The Clinks is split pushing in the meantime. With the Strafe, he will pressure the mid tier 1, and looks like it might not even be fortified. No, it'll drop down for free, so Clinks getting something. Aspera, they should be able to eventually claim this tower. However, this one will be fortified after looking for jump in. Gets Thug, and an entire creep away, but the Snowball is there. Now, Afterlife's in a lot of trouble right now. He's going to get punched up in the air, but he will be just fine to get out of there. In the meantime, Hookshot into the back line. Nikwa, though, he's trying to go for too many heroes. He will get them both, actually, barely, with the shards coming in from the Tusk. In a two-for-one trade so far, Apathy going to back on out. Familiar still overhead. Afterlife getting shot down from the high ground by the Clanks. He will be fine because the Familiar drop will save him. Laguna Blade plus a three-man LSA from Undershock will claim two kills, three kills, in fact, as the grand total. Tusk will snipe Axe on the side with those shards, but now we have Nikwa be on the chase. Undershock is not that healthy right now but maybe he can get to his tier one tower it seems like he should be fine especially with familiars overhead undershock is even going to get back up from the dazzle so he's not going to die right now but 14 to 15 and these fights are just so freaking even yeah completely chaotic and i feel like for and to some extent that favors myi or i favors aspera myi i feel like they need to be getting objectives off of this and especially with the mech advantage the dust not going to land onto nico baby uh, and Aspera did have some sort of indication that he was nearby with the Sentry Ward. Sentry Ward just out of range to see him now, and they're going to look to jump forward. Shards are going to catch three. No one is caught in them, though. They are going to get the net and the Walrus Punch off in the Limbo. He gets the Grave off in time, but he is cogged up by Nikwa. Over on the west side, Undershock has been completely isolated out. He gets the LSA off. There's a covering call, uh, call 
from Afterlife, but he's going to drop super low and finished off to the Riptide. And it's going to end up being a two for ones thus far in MYI's favor. Undershock with the Fiery Soul movement speed should be able to make it out, but he's blocked up by the Apathy. Nico Baby, though, not going to be going for that one, and they could find the Visage. They do with the Rocket Flare down to the south. Our Zeke De left for dead from his teammates and the hookshot gonna miss but not gonna matter ends up being a three for one in my's favor and now they'll get some objectives yeah, this fight was a little bit more decisive there that axe call though really good uh isn't really going to be quite good enough as he said he just got absolutely demolished after that call the call extra armor wore off because of the mass amount of damage there coming out from this pugna he blasted him he life drained him and well, then Axe was just dead at that point, so Aspera once again being initiated upon, still it's not with this hook shot, which is how you would expect most of these fights to start, but hey, as long as you start a fight, doesn't really matter how you do it, Tusk now finds himself with the Glimmer Cape. The defensive power of Spartan in this particular game we've already seen, being able to save his allies from the Axe is huge, and now you have the Glimmer Cape to save your allies from anyone, really, especially this Lina who is probably going to go for an Aghanim Scepter, but won't have that for a very long time. So it is the Aspera side to go right into Roshan right now. There's a familiar spotting it, and the rest of Aspera, they are coming around from the left side, but a call's there. They're all spotted out. Are they going to fight this? I don't think they really should. They're going to get the Cogs to bump back. Undershock shards will fly through. They have the Lina isolated. She'll throw herself into the air, but she'll fall back into a massive hero. She will fall immediately. Milan off to the top side will get dropped in trade, but it's Limbo in the most trouble. He's going to get hit with the clockwork, and he will drop sooner rather than later. Snowball is going to save Thug and Spartan as they go. Now to the gy Gyrocopter. They'll take that kill, and they'll snipe down the Visage. It's a four for one in favor of Mayan Sandy, and the Axe has to bail out of there. Man, these initiation song of the sirens have been impeccable. Even though that one looked a little bit sketchier because of the positioning from Aspera, yeah. just not enough to combat against that. Yeah, they kind of walk in blindly there, uh, knowing that the Roche would be a big advantage towards MYI, allow them to play across the map a little bit more aggressively with their clinks. Afterlife mid lane, Blinks looking for the courier. It had a glimmer keep on it. Would have been a big pickup if he was able to call that, but. And not able to do so and yeah as you mentioned the si song of the siren setting up so well there they're isolate out the lena bring her down and just roll with that fight it's like afterlife will teleport out after uh, his little mission for the courier he's not gonna get it but uh it's my insanity to claim the objective they take the mid tier two keep in mind clinks at this point with the desolator and having a pugna with maxed out blast uh, really the only weakness here for my insanity is the fact they don't have a ton of mana on thug Hasn't gone for Arc Boots. They do have one set on the Naga Siren, which is, you know, fine. But uh, this Pugna's looking to spam out his skills, and I don't think he'll have quite mm -hmm. enough to do that. But with the Desolator, they don't really need to. Aspera, they will not want to really touch this. Now with the 10-foot pull, so this tower is going to fall. That's suddenly two Tier 2s for my insanity and an Aegis in the span of, what, like a minute? That's going to lead in total to like a 7,500 gold swing at least. And it's going to get a little bit worse in just a little bit while the graphs update. Yeah, they do have the Aegis here as well. They see the Lena over towards that mid lane. She does have a TP. They see the Apathy in the top lane. And they're going to start to pressure the high ground here with the Sigil. Nether Blast, Desolator. They'll be able to take down this tier 3 before a response is even mounted. The Familiar's going to try and delay things up. The TP back from the Lena is there. The Gyro still has 10 seconds on cooldown on his TP and is walking from the off lane. So tier 3 goes the way of the Dire for free. And MYI chipping away at the melee racks as well. Perhaps. They should have chose to go for that ranged Rax, as they are going to have to back off now. And that potentially could regen, but easy tier 3 going their way, and they still have the Aegis, and they're pretty damn healthy as well. And they have 30 seconds to wait until they have another Song of the Siren. They just have to make sure to not get hit with the Blink Call from the Axe. But they have another one in the back line. Afterlife's going to jump right in, trying to go for Nico Bay, but this is the hero with the Aegis. They get the hook shot back in the back lines, and Limbo's going to die with no Grave there. Snowball going to save the Clinks. It looks like Apathy is not going to get his kill on Nico Bay just yet, and is still going to get fired down by the Desolator shots. Clinks lives. They do take out the Clockwork, who is just running Interference, but the Clockwork essentially traded his own effective life for three effective lives of Aspera. Backdoor protection going to kick in, but with no Gyrocopter and no Dazzle, they're going to cut right through the backdoor protection, force that in from Nico to Nico Baby, but again, this guy has a double life, so he does not care that he goes down. Raxes have fallen. They don't even need the range racks at this point. Even the tier three was good enough here for my insanity. They'll snowball right on out of there, and I think that actually dodged dust. Well, another dust is going to be mm -hmm. thrown. Clink's now going to be chased out. But they don't have another chill, not in range. RZ can't quite find it. Nico Baby will have another invis soon. Afterlife's gonna jump forward. But Nico Baby is now glimmered and they sing. 
that's gonna catch three I don't think they capitalize on it I think it's time for my insanity to leave and they will all just go their own separate ways we'll see if Aspera can actually catch anyone on the retreat but it seems a little bit doubtful Nagasire smoking up to get a little bit more distance a little bit faster she's gonna turn around and sacrifice her life for sure well she has another mirror image maybe with the jukes there's a familiar right overhead I don't know if the jukes are good enough now she's gonna get called LSA and dropped but the damage has already been done. Melee Rax is taken yeah. so early on. Uh, Spartan has been absolutely phenomenal with mm -hmm. his snowball saves. Uh, saving the Aegis there twice, effectively, it seemed to give Clinks like four lives, and the Apathy, with his fresh 10-second BKB, felt like he could overextend and try and bring down Nico Baby, but he goes down before the Clinks goes down the first time they commit for him again. There's another snowball save on top of the Familiars after the Aegis pop, and MYI just able to keep this clink up and right-clicking, and he does a hell of a lot of damage right now. Aspera really don't have much of a way DD. to deal with it. And then under Undershock, three shots? <laughs> they uh, wanted to give the Lina the double damage rune. They wanted to refill the bottle, but instead, Niku Baby is going to absolutely destroy the Lina. She does purge off the double damage rune with the Yule Scepter, so the double damage isn't going to go towards the towers, but still, Clinks is absolutely trucking and now he's a blink dagger which is not really yeah. a super common item on the clinks but i think at this point uh you can afford to not get more damage since well clearly you're doing okay for yourself yeah and you have the tusk and the clockwork to start to create space for you so that positioning tool could be very valuable uh, in these engagements if you're able to jump into the back lines bring down that dazzle in two or three shots as we just saw in the river then that could be huge Hugely influential for the team fights. 15 seconds on the sideline for the Lina now, and we will see the Dire Side once again start to pressure the high ground. Really quickly at that, Thug's gonna start off with a little bit more mana this time. Apathy off to the left side only has a BKB, so it's up to the Rocket Barrage and the Call Down, but the tower has already been taken, and honestly, again, this is good enough for my insanity. This time they don't mm -hmm. have a double life, so pushing super aggressively with the intent of trying to take Raxes, a little bit less appealing for them, but they walk in, take a free tier 3 tower, and walk out, and keep in mind, top lane tier 2 is still available for them, and Aspera have not defended their tier 3s so far, so the odds of them defending tier 2 are astronomically low. Uh, it seems like my insanity can just keep on going through and just claim tower after tower after tower, and then Klinx's invisibility is in fact going to get a lot better since there's no more natural true sight standing for Aspera. He could even just sit in the Aspera base and see what he can get. Yeah, he has uh, BKB flying out as well, so Nico Baby looking very survivable. Uh, even if he blinks forward super aggressively. It looks like the Radiant side may be trying to make something happen with a smoke, but uh, they'll look to break it just to push out the lanes here. And it looks like that was pinged out by the Dire side. So they are aware that perhaps there are other heroes lurking behind, and they will send uh, Shadow Walk Nico Baby up first. Afterlife should be able to blink out as the familiar scout, but the hook shot comes in too early. Easy three or four right clicks there from Nico Baby. 45 seconds on the sideline for this axe. And perhaps there was a DC there, but... Either way, MYI definitely can look to start uh, to pressure this towards the end of the game. This range Rax is definitely going to fall. When you take melee, range is pretty much expected to follow straight after, especially when it's this early on. But hey, that was really nice of uh, Milan right now to show us exactly what my insanity are going to be doing. They want to push the bottom lane, and it seems like they'll <laughs> be able to take that one without too much of an issue, and Espera shouldn't really be willing to defend this. The only question is, will they, able, will they be able to shove mid lane enough to prevent a secondary push in that lane as well, because one lane of Raxes, though it is extremely bad for Aspera, near crippling, it's not instant lose. If you lose two sets of Raxes pre-30 minutes, mm -hmm. I think you're just out of the game pretty much no matter what. Yeah, I mean, they have a decent lineup to deal with uh, Super Creeps. They have Gyro, Dazzle, Lina, and Axe, so it's not bad, but the Gyro's not doing any damage right now. He's only got BKB, Treads, Aquila. 24 minutes into the game does have four levels in flat cannon but it's really not helping him out too much in this in these fights so it seems like at least in a way in terms of uh, his item build that that aggressive dual lane from myi has been somewhat of a success and the gyro currently sitting fifth overall uh, on the net worth chart is is not exactly where you want him to be it looks like dire side will assemble up as you mentioned going to use uh, the images to jump forward towards this creep wave and force out a response from the radiant side undershock has a tp so just looking to push out that top lane limbo has one as well but they're definitely just going to sack this range racks and maybe look to defend that mid lane nico baby is actually going to not go straight for the raxes they 
have to fight through backdoor protection. Mm -hmm. It seems like my insanity instead are going to set up for a double push. Just instantly go to the bottom lane, slide over mid, and keep Aspera guessing. And it looks like first it's going to be that mid lane. Strafe is active. Melee Rack's taking a lot of damage. Here comes the call down, but the missiles will miss because of the snowball. Secondary missile will also miss, and the snowball will disengage right into the apathy. Everyone else is sleeping, and the apathy will drop. No allies available. Nick Baby's in the front lines. Not where he wants to be, but pops the BKB. Right into RZ. He'll try to go grave from Limbo. Not there in time. Nick Baby's going to get hit with the call and the Laguna Blade. He'll drop. Giving up a Beyond Godlike Streak to Blue, but that's not really going to be good enough at this point because the base is in shambles. Spartan's going to chase forward into the Tier 4s, and the Tier 4s are just going to kill him off. Now Nico is going to get called as well as dunked. They lose three, but they take the melee Raxus because Milan and Thug, they had their eyes on the prize. And in the midst of this, bottom lane ranged was also dropped. So yep. even though it's Aspera getting a couple kills and a hell of a lot of gold off of those kills, they again lose the important objective. Yeah, and it's not like it gave them an immediate new item. Like, Undershock already had his ag, so he's got 2k gold on him now, but that won't translate into anything. The Apathy died early once again, was forced to buy a quarter staff. Uh, he will be nowhere near a butterfly if that's what he's looking to build into, which presumably he is. And they find the melee racks mid, range racks bottom, as you mentioned. So MYI will shrug that off, maybe wait for the next Roshan, which is in about a minute and a half from now, and then look to find uh, that final push. Well, the defensive power of the Tusk is definitely here, however, with the, uh, now with the Aghanim Scepter on the Lina, at least Aspera have a chance of killing off this hero. Uh, it really did help that Mind Sand decided to walk into tier 4s, and, well, they don't really have a ton of armor, like, no hearts or anything like that, so they actually do have Undershock on the roam. They're gonna find Niku Baby. Oh, no, he will blink out of there, but the Invis rune still holds, so Niku Baby will maybe still be in trouble. Now he goes to Invis. Undershock missed his opportunity. I don't think he had quite enough damage to kill off this yeah. Klinks, but at least you could try to force a BKB charge out. Yeah, it probably would have just been a BKB charge. He may have paid with his own life, though, I fear. Uh, they're going to pop a Dust mid, uh, expecting the Klinks to be around, but not been able to find that. Undershock going to rotate. Find Spartan, but a lot lurking behind him. And, of course, with that Snowball and the Glimmer Cape on the oh, Tusk, definitely not the easiest desiring. target. Okay, he's not going to take that bait. He's going to back off. Undershock gonna think better of it. Seems like Aspera really only willing to defend high ground. At this point, the hook shot though is gonna be found mid onto RZ. It pushes back Limbo as well. Uh, but the Visage is gonna be able to make it out. They'll find the Dazzle though. Call down will connect onto two. RZ finds a call onto two as well, but there's no follow up just yet. The LSA comes through though. Rocket Barrage is there. Dunk one, Laguna Blade on the second. Tusk and the Clockwork down. Nico Baby though, doing work in the back lines, is able to bring down one and they will finish off the Axe as well. Ends up being a three for two. The Apathy completely caught out of position now. No BKB charge available to him. Nico Baby should be able to run him down. He does see the familiars though. He's gonna jump up towards his tier two for the true site, but he will be pincered by the Naga and the Pugna and brought down triple kill going the Klinks' way. Undershock the only one to survive and the final outer tier tower in a lot of trouble and the familiars will even drop to add salt to the wound. That was even a good start there for Aspera. They catch a mm. really good call down with the call with the follow up there from the Alina but the crucial fact is that they don't catch the Klinks in that burst combo. If they do I could see Aspera very easily claiming the victory in that particular fight. Uh, you know, it's not going to lead them into too, too much. Maybe they take a tower after that, but that's not even going to be super relevant. But uh, now at this point, Niku Baby is still being live with Thug. They have the Blast, they have the Searing Arrows, and they're going to look for the Megas right now. Blast will take down the Range Racks. Undershock can look for an LSA, but will miss because of the Blink Out. The, this Nether Ward is destroying this Lina's health pool. Will finally be cleaned up, but only one melee rack stand between my insanity and guaranteed victory. And uh, Aspera, they're in a position where they will... Actually, no, mid-range is still alive, so never mind. Not completely, but uh, they're in a position where they're just trying to hold, just trying to not lose the game. I don't really know what will have to happen for Aspera to turn things around and actually win. Apathy mm. needs, like, what, another 10,000 gold? If he finds 10,000 gold, maybe they have a chance? <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to get uh, real lucky. He's going to have to, like, skill Grievel's Greed or something, but... Uh, the gyro, he's pretty ineffective at this point. I wouldn't say he's very effective at all. Seven seconds on his BKB charge. He's pretty much just a call down uh, and a, a little bit of magical burst. But uh, it looks like the Dire Side are going to jump into Roche and they're going to be able to melt it very easily uh, with that medallion up onto Milan's Naga Siren. So that's the second life for Nico Baby. And with that and the BKB. I don't feel like Aspera have any answer to this. They are going to try and smoke up, but they're going to be a little bit too late. And now, uh, with really no vision up on the hill, uh, they have to back off into the cover of their base. 
They only have a couple of Observer Wards out right now, and those Observers will be cleaned up pretty quickly because Milan is walking around with a gem, and Naga Siren with gem also gives her illusions true sight, so yeah, mm -hmm. soon Espera are going to be completely blind, and they need these sentries to stay alive. You can't always count in the dust to catch Nico Baby because he does have the BKB and he has a tusk behind him. So, uh, yeah, they want Nico Baby right now. He is isolated, kind of, but they're going to blink instead, going for the Apathy Wallace Punch plus Life Drain. Call is going to come in, save the Apathy's life, but now Afterlife in a lot of trouble. They get the missiles down, but the song is there as well. They're all sitting in the call down, but now the Gyrocopter is essentially useless. Cog's heal up. It's going to catch Undershock and push back Afterlife, and they're also right onto the Apathy with Nico Baby going to snipe the Dazzle immediately. They're going to kill off the Gyrocopter copter shortly after an afterlife he's on the run to the north they don't even have to kill him they could let him go milan's gonna drop pretty low mirror image and mech gonna keep him alive right now nico baby's still at half hp plus ages he does not care about anything right now his undershock's gonna teleport right to the back lines gets life drain and nico baby he's gonna look for the job copter he just bought back no one's gonna change his mind go for our zeke because a kill is a kill and i'm pretty sure he can get whatever he wants although sitting in tier 4 tower range he'll get the kill loses ages but now with only job copter defend it's game over very well played from MYI all around. The snowballs were super on point from Spartan. Uh, Milan's Song of the Siren feels like it turned or saved the fight every single time it was used. And this definitely doesn't look like a squad that was just put together uh, in recent weeks. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I thought that was for you. I know. I, I got a little <laughs> bit excited there. Damn you, Milan. <laughs> Maybe next time. Uh, guys, it's going to be my insanity to claim victory in Game 1. Uh, it was a little bit sketchy towards the start, perhaps, but their very heavy mm. tempo-based gameplay ultimately did come through in the end. Looks like shutting down Gyrocopter's farm, they shut it down enough, let's say, so as mm. to prevent him from being any sort of significant problem in the later stages. Aspera do have another chance to keep in this winner's bracket, but uh, this is not an elimination game, so if they lose, it's not the end of the world. I'm Mike Loves, I've been joined by more Rage Please, guys, and we'll be right back for Game 2 between Mind Sandy and Aspera.